everyone, this is Pastor Timothy Mitchell, and we're super excited for what God is doing. So listen up, guys. Officially, as of December 31st, Watch Night Service, Beth Modern Services will begin every Friday virtually on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Instagram Live. We look forward to seeing you guys in the building. Don't meet us there. Beat us there. God bless you. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're gonna lift up his holy name. Welcome into the house of the Lord virtually. Beth Mata, we're gonna lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. It's a declaration. Sing to our God. Come on, can you clap your hands right where you are? And let's lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
Right here, lift up your voice right where you are and lift up the name of Jesus. All right, guys, so we're at that point of service where we're going to open up the scriptures together and actually learn together. So we pray that you all draw your hearts and your minds in and just get ready to receive what God has to say. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Of course, uh, you know, this is Pastor Mitchell. And uh, this reason why we're set up different, as promised, is because we want to offer a different approach to our Friday worship service. Uh, you guys are much aware. Um, we put out marketing for it so that you guys can prepare for what we call the altar experience. Uh, so I know that uh, many, many of our members are in, in different states. Uh, many of you who watch afterwards uh, may not be able to come necessarily to the sanctuary, uh, but that should not stop us from having an altar. Um, and so we created this is this table is an altar when the table becomes an altar, much like uh, the therapy office when when the couch becomes your healing. Right. Uh, so this is a, 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 a moment where we talk about hard things that reaches into the depths of who we are and ultimately uh, 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 pulls out some of the things that are in us that does not belong there. And we lay them at the altar. We lay them at the altar. Tonight, I want to talk to you from uh, a, a topic that I believe is extremely important, which is uh, the importance of joy, the importance of joy. Uh, I, two weeks ago, I was preaching out. I had to preach at a guest church and the Lord gave me this topic and I, I preached it more than taught it. And the Lord said, I want you to go back again and I want you to teach this. And so it has been my heart's desire to make sure that I'm, I am, of course, obedient to the Lord. Um, but also I want to make sure that uh, you guys are getting it as well, which is why I believe the Lord told me to teach it. Uh, it is it is important for us to have joy. Um, and my goal at the end of this uh, 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 exp this Friday worship experience at the altar uh, is that you would lay down those things that you have been so worried and concerned about that has caused you ultimately to uh, 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 allow the enemy to steal your joy. Those things that have stolen your joy, I want you uh, tonight by the end of this to lay those things down at the altar. I want you to lay those things down wherever you are. This is the altar. Now, uh, you might not want to share it all and you don't have to, but if it's something you're willing to uh, confess and profess, when, by the end of this, I want you to put it in the chat. I'm laying cigarettes down at the altar. I'm laying fear down at the altar. I'm laying anxiety down at the altar. And when you lay it down, that declaration Oh, yes, that declaration is a prophetic declaration to a newness that will take place in your life. I know people say all the time, like, I don't want to engage like that. I don't want to engage. I'll tell you this, and I say, I say this with full assurance. The enemy will never tell you to engage and in, in, in declare your healing. The enemy would never tell you to engage and declare your deliverance. The enemy, the enemy would never tell you to engage and declare your restoration. And so it is important for us to understand the importance of declaring, even in a virtual sense, uh, de declaring what God says about us to be true and laying down, eradicating and mitigating those things that are not true that the devil has and even ourselves has. Not it's just not just the enemy is sometimes the inner me that I had that, that 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 fights against the will of God It's the flesh. And so as we delve into the word of God tonight, I want you to be sure I want you to be sure 
to lay those things down. That's what I want you to do. Let's open up in prayer before we get to scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for your great grace and your great mercy, for your extensive love, the exhaustive love. Uh, there is no greater love than the love that you have bestowed upon us. And so we are grateful to you, Lord, for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing for us, and ultimately who you are. The fact that you have the ability to love perfectly, and we still are yet learning a perfect love because we're imperfect people. We are in awe of you, O oh God. We're in awe of the fact that you don't allow the cares of the world to swallow you up, but you are ultimately standing outside of all of the chaos able to bring order to the chaos for those that will reach out to you and ask for your help. And so, Lord, tonight we ask for your help. We ask that you would be with us tonight. Speak through your man servant tonight at this altar and allow individuals to be healed, saved, delivered, set free, a newness to take place, a, re a rejuvenation and a restoration to take place in the lives of all those that see this live. And I thank you in advance, Lord, in your mighty and matchless name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, I, I want to say also a uh, shout out to uh, lady, leading Lady Mitchell. I love you so much to the first family. I love all of y'all, all of my babies. To every member of Beth Mod, I want you to know that I love you before we delve into the word. I'm happy to be your pastor. I'm so grateful to be your leader. I'm so grateful that you would trust me to be able to uh, pour into you what I believe the Lord is saying for this time, for this season, uh, for this generation, for this era. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I want you to know also uh, the praise and worship team did an, an absolutely amazing job. And I want to say thank you as well for ushering us into a place of worship and praise. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you. We always, uh, I, Beth Mata's praise and worship, no, no matter who's leading, we're all, we always have a great experience. And so thank you so much for allowing the Lord uh, to, le to lead you, for you yielding to the Holy Ghost. Thank you so much. All right, guys, let's delve in. Joel chapter one, and we're gonna start at verse 11. Woo! It says, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, how, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree languisheth. Uh, the palm tree also and the, and the apple tree even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Joy is withered away from the sons of men. Listen, guys, I want to talk to you. Uh, I wish I had time to discuss what it means for the vine dressers and for the husbandmen. But but I want to Ultimately, because the context of the scripture speaks for itself, I don't have to go into a deep, detailed uh, uh, synopsis of what this scripture is saying. But I'll ultimately say this. The land started to suffer. The people in the land and the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah started to suffer as a result of the joy being taken away from the sons of men. Because the joy was withered away from the sons of men. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, there is so much that can perplex us in this day and time. So much that can uh, ultimately uh, make us fearful of life itself in this time. In certain states, if you are much aware, you'll see, or if not, I, I encourage you to research, that there, there are individuals who are experiencing or has recently experienced life-threatening tornadoes. Uh, certain states that are undergoing very, 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 very strenuous complexities in their life right now. Others are undergoing uh, 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 dust storms that has... Uh, 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 ultimately done damage to 
so many types of uh, 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 homes and cars and uh, and people's ways of living all together, period. So much going on. Uh, not only that, but I, I know some of you might be aware, and if not, uh, this is to make you aware, but you should also research that there are wildfires currently going on right now as of this morning, one of which they said uh, yesterday had zero uh, 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 percent of control. It was out of control. They, they had zero percent chance uh, of controlling it. And uh, uh, another one is now at 20, 26 uh, uh, percent control. Another one at 15 percent control. But yesterday was unable to be controlled as well. And so although they're making progress on controlling these fires, they said it, it has reached 200 acres and counting. Uh, so the lives of people, the wealth of individuals are fading. Uh, it's, it's, it's fading. Uh, uh, and, and these types of hardships, these types of hardships can, can leave a person depleted of all energy can leave a, per, a person depleted uh, 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 and, and no longer having a sense of fight left in them, ultimately making them ready to give up on life itself. I don't need to remind you about the inflation. We're about at 9% right now. Uh, 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 they, they stated uh, year, to, year to date 9%, but in the last three months, 12% increases in certain parts of, of, of the world, or now I won't say in certain parts of the world, in all, the, in all of America, if you will, uh, but in certain parts of the commerce, uh, they've experienced high levels of inflation more than others. It's just uh, mind boggling how much the world is undergoing such perplexing circumstances. But I am persuaded that uh, it is because the world, listen to me, yes, it is sin, but, but, but the world doesn't have any joy. What does joy, Pastor Mitchell, have to do with, what does joy have to do with what's going on in the world? Let, let me go a little bit further. Let's go back in Joel chapter one, verse three. It says, tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children, another generation, that which the, lo uh, that which the palmer worm have left, hath the locust eaten and that which the locust, uh, locust hath eaten or have left, the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm have left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up, is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare. And cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. Now we go down to uh, uh, verse 12. And it says, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. The lack of joy, the lack of joy, the lack of joy creates a toxic atmosphere. And that toxic atmosphere without joy, that atmosphere that's created without joy is an atmosphere, a breeding ground for negativity. Some people call it the law of attraction. But I know the scripture says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Have you ever said in your day, when it seems as if you were having a bad day, you kind of woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Or you may have woke up in great confidence with great expectation. And as soon as you get outside, you realize that it's raining. It kind of makes you feel a little dreary. 
After that, uh, someone drives by while you're walking to your car or catching the bus and, and they, they wet your clothes by moving a little too fast or you get a bad phone call and, and you ask yourself, what more can happen today? Your joy is depleted in a sense. And now your expectation has leaned more toward the negative than the positive. As a result of that, your mindset is what else your expectation has leaned toward the negative. And as a result of your expectation leaning toward the negative, you create negative experiences in your life. I know this modern day uh, 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 generation and era calls it manifestation. But you can create your atmosphere by what you believe. That is a scriptural, scriptural truth. And I want you to know that many of us, because of the complexities of life, not knowing where to work, bills, uh, 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 you feeling like you got to go from job to job because bills are increasing because of inflation. Gas prices, you don't know whether to catch the bus because that seems dangerous. Everyone's getting killed, especially in the city of Baltimore. Seems like almost everyone's dying in the minds of many individuals. And then uh, should I catch the bus or should I drive my car? Because if I drive my car, I don't have any money because I'm spending a, 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 a lot of money on gas. Not to mention that I have to do maintenance on my vehicle as well. What do I do? You get caught up in the mindset that you're in the rat race. You're in the rat race for success, in the, in the rat race of survival, not just for success, but just to survive. And I want you to know it is important for us to not get carried away by distractions. This is not the first time the world at large has experienced famine. All throughout the scripture, we can see that there were times of famine. There were times of persecution. Uh, Israel, who was promised by God. Excuse me. Israel, who was promised by God to be a great nation, a promised people. Not only experienced famine, but at one point because of their disobedience, experienced captivity. Having their land stripped away from them for a while. But all in all, God was still there. And I, I want to encourage you today that, that, that we ought to maintain our joy. Well, pastor, what is joy anyway? Well, I'm not going to give you just any definition of joy. I'll give you the biblical meaning of joy. The biblical meaning of joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is not produced by external circumstances, but is dependent on who Jesus is, what he has done, and less of who we are, what we have, and what is happening around us. I want you to take for a moment and think about how much your God is in control. Jesus says, when you, when you encounter hardships, take joy because he has already overcome the world. Yep, I understand. It doesn't look like in some cases that the world is overcome. But I want, I want you to know this. Number one, in the event that uh, you are watching this, this means that you are able and capable of waking up this morning. Now, I understand. Yes, I understand. You feel like some of you may feel like, excuse me, some of you may feel like it is uh, uh, Im important for me to understand, Mr. Pastor, that what is it to have life if it seems like your life is not worth living? I want you to know that having life is God giving. Having life is having God to a certain degree to start with. How do I know? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. Now, I want you to understand this in context because people over-spiritualize that word life. But no, all life, physical life, spiritual life is wrapped up and tied up in the breath of Yahweh, 
in the life of Jesus Christ, in Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so when you have Jesus, you have the very giver of life. Now, if you don't have him, it doesn't mean that he, you are, you're not experiencing grace. Because although you don't appreciate him, he still gives you life every morning you wake up. And when he decides to take life away, none of us can say that he's unjust. Because only the one that gives life knows when it's already all right to take life. And I want you to know that. I want you to put that. Only the one that gives life can determine when it's time to take life. Only the one that gives life can determine when it's time to take life. And so uh, be encouraged today that not only now do you have your life, but you have the activities of your limbs. Not only now do you have the activities of your limbs, but you have your right mind. And if you're struggling in your mind, I want you to know that because you have a mind and you have a brain, you are in a very, if you, if you are human, you are in a very, which if you're watching this, you are human, unless you got the cat and the dog watching with you and praise God if they are and the parrot, praise God if they are. But you human who I'm talking to have something inside of your brain called neurotransmitters. There's a study and there's a practice called neuroplasticity. It talks about the fact that your brain, your neurotransmitters, no matter how much it undergoes tra traumatic experiences, and creates uh, things such as PTSD and depression. Your neurotransmitters can undergo what you call neuroplasticity, which means it has a perpetual chance of changing based on what you feed it. And so even if you are far away from your right mind in this moment, take joy at the fact that God has created you with the ability to have your mind change. What th this is amazing because I used to wonder why God would say in the scripture, y'all know the scripture, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. What do you mean let? Uh, I'm trying. God is telling you when he says let this mind be in you that it's ultimately up to you if you would do the work. You can change your mind to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And I want you to take joy in that. Take joy in that, that, not that your circumstances are good or bad, but that Jesus Christ, the living Savior, the Son of God, God himself manifested in flesh. God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, created you with the ability to be able to change your mind and your circumstance. We bless God. I take a moment. Hallelujah. To bless you, O oh God, because you created me with the answers inside of me. You created me. Hallelujah. If I would just read your word, you tell me that I can be transformed by the renewing of my mind. God, I, I, I thank you because my mind can be renewed. I want you to I want you to 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 to, to put this in the chat. Those of you that are watching, my mind can be renewed renewed. My mind can be renewed. There's some things in the world today. It just is what it is. History is what it is. We can't change what happened. History is what it is. Let's say you create a smell, you create, you create a fragrance. You might be able to add something new and kind of manipulate the fragrance, but that fragrance initially, it is what it is. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that although some things remain what they are, God has created us to ultimately be able to change, not just spiritually, but if you want to lose weight, you can change that. Oh, if you sick, uh, God has given you the ability to heal, heal yourself. You can change that. I, the body is created to heal itself. Aren't you glad that the, the, the one who created the universe, although many are trying to say that the universe has created itself 
and many call the universe God. In the early 1950s, 1960s, science, they, they, they admit it, they admit it. And I thank God they admit it, that they were wrong. They had it wrong when they said that the universe created itself. And they understood that it took, they call a causal agent uh, uh, to create the, the universe, an intelligent being. Uh, but, but we know who the intelligent being is. He is not not named. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. His name. And some people, some people say Jesus is only 2,000 years old. I want you to go to Daniel. Uh, go to Daniel uh, 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 when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fiery furnace. Remember, they said, behold, I see a fourth man in the fire, and he looks like the Son of God. I want you to know, although he stepped into the world in time, in history, my God, 2,022 years ago, I want you to know, hallelujah, that he was there beforehand. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. He is our King of Kings. He is our Lord of Lords. He is Yahweh. He is Jehovah Sikhanu. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Elohim. My God today. And I thank God. Hallelujah. I thank him because he's there. And what, what, but since he is there, he knows the blueprint of what life will be. And if we have just Joy, not in our situation, but in him, we come to a place of peace. We come to a place of peace. How do I get joy? How? How do I get joy? You're telling me to have joy. You're telling me to have this good feeling. You're telling me to have this feeling of pleasure as a result of knowing who God is. But how can I? I'm glad you asked me. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 26 and 27 says to separate from joy. I'm sorry. Let's go there. Let, let, let's go there. Let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Second Chronicles, I mean, first Chronicles, I'm sorry. 16. Let's do this. Please take these down. Please, somebody, y'all know what we do here at Beth Mata. Please put this in the chat. Somebody will get a hold of this later on and will want to know exactly what the scripture is. And if they remember none of the words I say, let's, let's help them to remember the scriptures because that is what will keep us, the scriptures. All right, uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, chapter 26 and 27. All righty, here we are. For great is the Lord. Uh, this is 25. I'm sorry. Uh, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. We were just talking about the God that made the heavens. Many people in this time, and uh, to, to, to just touch on this, many people during this time uh, yield to astrology. I see so many individuals who put up the, 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 the word of the day for Taurus and Zodiacs and Sagittarius and so forth and so on. And it, it makes me laugh because uh, we, we uh, understand in every other context that, that uh, if, if I want to learn how to work my computer, I'll go to the manual. And ultimately, there is someone that created the manual who, if the manual doesn't work for you, you can reach out to. The same for, uh, I don't care if it's pancakes or any type of food. There's, there's instructions on the back. And the one that created it gives you your instructions. Now, we know, uh, it's, it's very much known that the, that the stars did not create us. They did not create us. And, uh, they did not create us. But there is someone who created the stars and us. And that person has an instruction manual, which we call the Bible, that is able to guide us. And so many people, instead of reaching out to God, many uh, much of, uh, of the reason why they don't reach out to God is because they don't want to have to yield to his standard. They just want information for the future. Uh, and, and so they block out the, uh, the, the, the responsibility and accountability part and just desire to get information. And the church is starting to do much of the same thing, uh, yielding to prophets um, without uh, being wanting to be accountable to living right and getting the foundation right. They just desire to get a word. And so, uh, but this, God made the heavens. 
But the Lord made the heavens. The rest of those things are idols. Go to the one who has created you and ask the, ask the creator uh, what you are supposed to do with your life. Ask the creator what you're supposed to do, what, your, what his purpose is for you. But that, that's just a nugget. Let's go back to the scripture. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Uh, uh, this is the, the new King, King James Version. When you read the King James Version, it doesn't say gladness. It says joy is in his place. Now, how do I get joy? <laughs> if I want joy... That means I have to get in his place. It's not a physical place. It's in his presence. Spending time with God. Spending time with God. I, I wrote a note here. It says to separate from joy is ultimately the equivalent of separating from God's presence. Because if you check your life and it seems void of joy... That means that you cannot possibly be in the presence of God. Because if you are in the presence of God, the scripture declares that in his presence is fullness of joy. And so how do you get joy? The way that you get joy is to, to take the word of God and meditate on his word. Not only that, you can go into worship. Start saying things like, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Not in a systematic way, but in a true way that allows you to experience a sense of joy and peace. Getting lost in the goodness of God saying, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me my right mind. I thank you for all that you've brung me out of. I thank you for the fact that although I'm not where I want to be, I know for sure I'm not where I used to be. I used to want to be a harlot. I used to want to be a, 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 a troublemaker. I used to want to be a busybody. I used to be a head busser. I used to want to slap a person before I asked any questions. I used, but, but, but God, although my money isn't the exact place I wanted to be, I'm so thankful to you. I'm thankful to you that my mind has not made me ruin my opportunities, that you ultimately have given me a mind to embrace my troubles rather than to run from my troubles. Understanding, Lord, that those those troubles and those persecutions, they make me, they make me, make me better. I remember when someone would try to uh, talk about me and I would slap them. But now to pray for them has ultimately showed me another side of who you are. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Lord. And when you get lost in those moments, when you ponder on just where he brought you from, it is impossible. It is hard. It is in. Uh, it, it's extremely, extremely hard, extremely hard to stay in that place of doubt, to stay in that place of defeat. Now, I have some some individuals on here who are, are extremely educated and needs to understand the the scientific and psychological process of how this works. And I want to uh, indulge you as well. I have information uh, here uh, that many psychologists and psychiatrists are aware of, uh, 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 and that that is uh, the, there are two phrases that have been coined to identify the healthy brain as well as the unhealthy brain as a result of trauma and stress. One of them is called the learning brain. The learning brain, uh, if you and you can research this, the learning brain is very much uh, 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 curious. It's open to learning new things, even willing to dare to learn new things, has cr much creativity, much creativity, sees challenges as an opportunity. Healthy brain. The healthy brain is the learning brain. The learning brain does not see conflict and run away from it, but sees it as an opportunity. This comes from, watch this, this comes from an atmosphere of safety, understanding that you're surrounded by safety. And when moments happen uh, uh, where uh, 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 
catastrophe or complexities arise, ambiguity arises, you know that it ultimately is not for your demise. And so you look at it from a healthy approach as if it is an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to learn. This, my friends, psychologically is called the learning brain. However, in contrast, there is something we call the survival brain. The survival brain, uh, uh, it says, is a hyper-focused brain. What does that mean? Uh, the hyper-focused brain has no has no no desire or mindset for creativity. It is literally stuck. Watch this on threats and sees everything as a threat. So it handles life as a threat. It panics is afraid of getting things wrong uh, and thinks, watch this, y'all. Some of y'all think this is healthy. Talk to your therapist. It thinks in black and white. Hmm? Has no desire for gray areas. Gray areas, why, why is gray areas good? Gray areas are the areas of the thought process. It allows you to see, to, to, to figure out what is and what isn't. It allows you to see what is right or is wrong or even come up with new ideas. Let me give you a, 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 a better understanding of this. It is the gray area that gave us cars that 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 fly. This is the gray area that gave us cars that that uh, 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 have have uh, 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 the ability to drive uh, drive themselves. It is it is the gray area that caused. Uh, cars to come into existence altogether. The freedom to think about something that is not necessarily right or wrong to create, but ultimately can fulfill a space. Those things are the, the realms of creativity that are ultimately shut down by the survival brain because it is ready only to make it or not make it. Focuses on uh, 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 making sure that 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 it, it is it is getting things done to protect itself. However, uh, the, how can we go from the learning brain to the uh, survival brain? And how can we uh, uh, or why do we rather start off with the learning brain and then ultimately end up at the place of survival brain? I'll tell you why. Saints of God, families, friends, uh, enemies, most of us start off with security. This is why I believe the enemy has made it his, his, his job. He's made a very strong gesture to ruin the children beforehand in, in, and the family, to ruin the family ultimately. Because the brain is developed in a creative way when it is, when it feels safe, watch this, when it feels protected, it happens, uh, the survival and, and the learning brain, it, it's, it's extremely critical during the child's early years because when they mess up, depending on how they are reprimanded, will ultimately make them feel as if they either have a chance to get it right again or if they can create a mess to get their hands dirty and figure out what textures are, or if they'll get in trouble. Ultimately, in those moments, they'll shy away from trying to be creative and figure things out and will ultimately focus on, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to fail. I don't want to end up in a demise. I don't want to end up unsuccessful. I don't want to end up defeated. Uh, defeated. And so their creative abilities are on a halt at a very young age, if the environment there that they're in is uh, an environment that will not allow them to make mistakes. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel a prophetic moment on me here. Some of you are afraid to make mistakes. Some of you are afraid to fail forward. This wasn't in my notes, y'all. It's not in my notes at all, but, but I feel this thing. Some of you are afraid to fail. You, 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 you've been, uh, some of you are afraid to fail because you've been the poster child. You've been the child that everybody looks to for success and you're afraid to fail because if you fail, you'll, you'll, you'll feel, some of you have even lied to yourself to the point where you're telling uh, yourself lies and you believe it. 
because you are afraid to tell your family the truth and your friends the truth because you know they look up to you and anything else will make you feel or you feel that it'll make you feel like a failure or that they'll think that you are a failure. But I want to release you on this altar today. I want you to lay down that negative mindset to feel as if you have to lie to yourself and to others. In order for you, my God, uh, to feel safe, in order for you to feel successful, I want you to know that the altar has officially created a safe place for you to fail. For you to say, I'm tired. I know y'all wanted me to graduate. I know that y'all wanted me to such and such. I know you wanted me to be married by this time. I know y'all wanted me to have kids with my husband. I know y'all wanted me, uh, y'all thought because I was tall, I was going to be a basketball player. I know that I may have tried to let you, uh, that I let you down and I didn't even try to. But I'm telling you that I, I need a release from trying to please everybody. I need a release from trying uh, 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 to appease everyone, make everyone proud of me and happy. I want you to know that God is proud of you when you are honest with yourself. God is proud of you when you are honest with where you are. God, your feelings are not demonic. Your feelings are an indicator that, that, that there are things in you that may need to get out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever felt stressed out? Yeah, yeah, that, that's not a demonic feeling. That's an indicator telling you that you are trying to please people too much. You're trying to get too much done without resting. And I am telling you, in order to be an emotionally healthy Christian and an, uh, an emotionally, uh, emotionally healthy child of God, you have to be willing to lay this stuff down here today. Lay it down. Yeah, you lay it down. Lay down your inability to, to be honest and choose to be honest today. Choose to be honest today with yourself. And, and, and watch this. As you do that, you, you ultimately are transforming the mind. You're, longer, you're, you're no longer in survival mode because you're no longer in the fight or flight state of mind. It's really four. It's not just fight or flight. It's fight. Flight, submit, or freeze. Yeah. And some of you, some of you, look, some of you are at a place where your progress is at a standstill. You're frozen because you don't know what to do. Some of you have, have, have taken the back seat and submitted to other people's desires for you because you don't know how to stand on your honesty. Tonight, be healed. Be delivered. Be set free from the expectations of other individuals and do what God has called you to do. He has called you to be honest. He has caused you, my God, to take joy in not your abilities, but in him, in his presence is fullness of joy. You should have joy after this tonight. You should have joy after this tonight. Let me say this. The survival brain focuses on danger. And, and I know, I know that the world the world is at such a critical place right now that the joy is departed from the land. But, but, but who will bring the joy back in the land? Who will bring joy back in the land? Are we waiting for God to do that? Are we waiting for God to bring joy back in this land? Do we have a responsibility in order for joy to, to, to be back in the land? The question begs an answer. And the answer is a resounding God is, it, it, we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us, number one. And the second part of that, that question, the B clause of that question uh, 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 is joy will, joy will come in the land when we get in the presence of God. You read with me First Chronicles. You 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 read with me, uh, 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 Joel, uh, 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 chapter one, verse eleven through twelve. You guys read that with me. Joy, 
is departed from the land. That's the reason why trees were, the apple trees were drying up. Famine, that scripture was saying famine is happening in the land because the joy is dried up. What happens when joy is dried up? The earth suffers. The air suffers. Oh, Lord Jesus. Politics suffer. I've never seen so much confusion in my life concerning politics. Never. And I know there's people who live longer than me that can say that they have never seen such an unrest even in the political world as well. It's a, it's a sad experience. But we are refusing, we are allowing the enemy to sift, sift us as wheat. Going throughout our day, not taking any rest from one job to the next job, from the next job to seeing family, because I got to please them or they will feel like that. I don't love them. I got to do this because if I don't do this, they'll feel like I'm not friends with them. And here you are running on Starbucks, running on Dunkin', running on fuels because you don't know how to rest and take joy with being in the presence of God. Hey, Shando Kabaye, I speak peace. That you would rest in the presence of God today and that your joy would be restored. Not your joy of physical things, but a God-given joy that comes from the knowledge of who he is. God can take my issues. Cast your cares upon me for I care for you. That's what the scripture says. Today, you, I, I, I give you a mandate. Today, I give you an assignment. I want you to put in the chat, I will, I will have joy. I will have joy. I will have joy. Whoever you are, I will have joy. I need you, I need, I need the next person to say this. I will lay down my cares. I will lay down my cares. I will lay down my cares. I will stop stressing. Stop. I, I will stop stressing. I will not allow anxiety to overtake me. I will not allow the fear of the future to overtake me. I will not live in the survival brain. I will not live at a place where I'm scared of failure. I will not live at a place where I'm scared of danger. The enemy will not focus my mind on the negativity. I will live in the learning brain. I will live in the learning brain. That is the place where I'm curious to see what God is going to do next. God, I'm, 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 I'm in situations, but my creativity is working. I don't know how you're going to do this, but I can think of a thousand ways you can bring me out before I think of one way that I'm going to fail. I will trust in you regardless. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to give you my hope. I'm going to give you my joy. I'm going to take joy. I'm going to take joy in you. The songwriter says, take joy, my king, in what you hear and let it be a sweet sound. When you, when you, when you offer up praises to him, he gets joy. He gets joy. And, and he reciprocates that joy because the joy that he gets, my God, when you, t when, when you sing to him or you worship, the Bible says in his presence, is fullness of joy. So once you get in his presence, the joy that you give to him, the joy that he feels, he reciprocates that joy. I encourage you today. I encourage you today. I encourage you with my whole heart to make sure, make sure, saints of God, make sure you are at a place where you are not allowing your life or the cares of this life, the cares of this world to affect you in such a negative way that it has depleted your joy. You need joy. You have to have joy. I pray that this lesson has blessed you. We talked about the current complexities of life and what has been going on in, in life. Uh, some of you have 
uh, the same issues. Some of you have more complex issues that you're going through. Stuff at home, in the personal life. Many are graduating right now. Uh, some of which are worried about the fact that they won't graduate. Some of which are worried about the fact that they've always been awkward, don't have anybody to go with. They don't want to end their 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 current high school uh, years uh, being another loner. Uh, feels like they don't even want to go to prom or experience some of the things and the festivities of what it means to be young because they just always feel like uh, uh, something negative will happen. And I'm, I'm encouraging you today to live. I'm encouraging you to trust God in his ability. Pray, see if he wants you to go. If it's meant for you to go, go alone if you have to. Stop finding our joy in the things of this world. Let's find our joy in knowing that God is with us wherever we go. That if God wants it to be a certain way, he'll make it happen. He'll make it happen. He'll make it happen. And until then, we can be satisfied with where God has us. Paul said it this way. Whatever state I find myself in, I've learned therewith to be content. Let contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. Great gain. What does that mean? If you have godliness and you're content with where you are, you have gained more than a rich person that has unrest. Godliness with contentment is great gain. The message today was import the importance of joy. We need to maintain our joy in a life where there's so much going on. We need to, if we don't, we heard from Joel chapter one, verses 11, uh, I mean, verses, uh, verses 12, that it'll ultimately dry up the land without joy. Without joy, it'll dry up the land. Our joy is depend, the, the, the land is depending on our joy. Oh, I'm not going to get into the chickens and the famine and all the diseases that's going on. I'll just say this. Let's start taking some joy into our day, our every day, and see exactly where it makes the, 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 the world land. Remember this. God gave us dominion over the earth, over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. It's nothing like having a king crying that his kingdom is without laws. Because all a king has to do is decree a thing. And when kings decree, it, it, it immediately becomes law. So we are in a position where those that have the authority are crying. And, and have, the enemy has zapped their joy when all we have to do is take our rightful positions. I want you to take your rightful position. I want you to say in the chat in my clothes, I will not allow the earth to experience joylessness and do whatever you have to do on a daily basis to make sure someone else has joy in their day. Make sure that someone, I don't care if it's an animal or a human being, the earth can have joy. My father, in, a, in my clothes, was trying to grow uh, flowers in his, in his flower bed. And he said one day he just began speaking to them and feeding them joy. After that, for two or three summers, they would never grow. He said he just, after two or three summers, just started speaking to them, telling them they're beautiful and what they're going to be. And them things began to sprout all beautifully each year, year after year. And I'm telling you, what joy can do can change everything. I dare you to give your situation joy. I dare you to take joy for yourself. That's what my challenge is to you. If you take nothing else from the day, the current complexities of life, a brain impacted by stress, the learning brain versus the survival brain, the definition of joy, how to empty out your cares, how to gather joy has all been talked about. But you take nothing else today. Take the fact that joy in the earth is our responsibility. 
This is the altar experience. I pray you have laid down, laid down your burdens. I pray that you have laid down your stresses. I pray that you have laid down those complexities that cause you to feel a sense of unrest each night. And I speak rest over you today in the name of Jesus Christ. For someone on here, you haven't given your life to Christ. And so you don't know what it means to truly rest in God or have joy in God. I encourage you to reach out today. Reach out. You can reach out by messenger. You can reach out by uh, by DMing us. You can reach out by email at BethMadaInc at gmail.com. B-E-T-H-M-A-D-A-I-N-C at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to uh, us at the church, 443-319-8994. It'll lead you to my business line, This Generation Will Succeed, which is a behavioral health organization, uh, but it ultimately will connect you directly to me or one of the staff members of the church as well. And so I want you to, I want you to be a, a, a confident today that if you are ready to give your life to Christ, it is one of the best decisions you'll ever make. It is the best decision you'll ever make. And that you won't allow anything to separate you from experiencing this revival and this freshness, this rejuvenation and this joy. Reach out now. Reach out now. If you want to be baptized in Jesus name, if you want to be infilled with the spirit of God, I can't do this on my own. Lord, I need your spirit. I need your strength. Reach out to us today and we can show you in the word of God how he promises to give you his spirit. Yes, we can show you that. He promises it. He promises it. For those of you uh, who desire to be a part of the Beth Mata family, I want you to reach out. Put your name and put hashtag join. Your name and put hashtag join. Yep, your name and put hashtag join. I want you to remember this. Uh, we, we cannot do life alone. We cannot. We cannot. And as a result of us not being able to do life alone, you should be connected to a tribe and a family. I want you to know that this can be your tribe. This can be your family. It's up to you. Make the conscious effort to say, you know what? I won't be without a spiritual family. Ones that commit to praying for me. Ones that commit to, to uh, 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 making sure that we pray together and we grow together in the word. Ones that commit to making sure uh, uh, that they uh, care about my mental health and I care about theirs. Though all of those things, all of those things you get in this family. All of those things. I don't want to begin to tell you what we do on a, on a daily and weekly basis, but someone re reaches out, whether it's myself or other staff members, to the members of the church on a daily, on a weekly basis, making sure that they're okay and have everything that they need. You can be a part of that, that you can be a part of that family. Make that conscious effort. Put your name and hashtag join. For those of you that are uh, 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 looking to sow, please be a blessing. As you heard me just say, we give to those that are in need, whether they are part of the church or not. And so we need your help. We need your help. We need your help to be able to give back. The Bible says "Let there, uh, uh, that there may be meat in my house. He was telling them to give that there may be meat in my house. When people come to the church, what you store up in the church is what you can go back and get when the time comes. I encourage every member of Beth Mata to pay their tithes 10% of your increase, whether it's your biweekly or weekly increase or whether it's your yearly increase, whatever you desire to do, uh, whatever your gross or your net, whatever you desire to do, sow, 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 sow your tithes. And uh, the Bible doesn't just talk about tithes, but it talks about offering. You, what are you offering God out of the fact that throughout a whole pandemic, you were able to keep your job throughout a whole pandemic, you were able to keep your home. And even if some of your bills are behind, you're able, you're able to maintain, give, I've given myself into a uh, 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 comfortability. I don't want to say uh, richness or anything like that, but I've given into uh, j just being able to experience a great life. And uh, I I'm grateful that 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 I give. I'm grateful that I give. I give by the thousands. I give. And you might not be able to do that. Give according to what you can give. I challenge myself to give and God has blessed me. And I'm encouraging you to experience that same type of blessing and grace, that same type of bl a blessing and grace. So, so today, dollar sign, Beth, B-E-T-H-M-A-D-A, -A, Beth Mata, dollar sign, Beth Mata, right? If you have Zell, 
So 443-360-7596. If you have Cash App, you can use Beth Mata Inc. at gmail.com. Either way you can give, but whatever you do, don't pass up an opportunity to sow. You all know what the scripture says about sowing. And so I promise you, and I challenge you to sow today. Alrighty, before we go, I want you to know our grand opening is June 3rd at 7 p.m. June 3rd, 7 p.m. We want you in the building, 5444 Bel Air Road. Grand opening in person and virtual, but we do not want you to be there virtually. We want you to be there with us in person as I am consecrated along with my wife as the, the church is consecrated and the church is fully established in person as well. Uh, the, the, uh, our, our newborn baby, well, I won't say newborn anymore. He's four months now, but our baby boy is being dedicated to the Lord. And we want you to be there and experience that with us. Come and celebrate with us as we give a child back to Christ in a world where there's so many who are Christless and godless uh, children that we see experiencing so much. We are wanting to set an example that we haven't seen in a while, in a long time of dedicating our children back to God. All righty. I want, I want you to be there. We want to have Mandela uh, Simmons singing, uh, Apostle Joseph Prude, my apostle out of Ohio, one of the greatest men in the gospel I've ever met in my life. And I've met a lot of people. Uh, I, I will be there doing the homily teaching, uh, uh, prophetically ministering to us. Uh, 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 and, and my bishop as well, Bishop Stephen Mitchell, will also be consecrating us, laying hands on us, and 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 there will be a multiplicity of other individuals there. Uh, it, great things will happen. You don't want to miss this opportunity. Please be there. Be there. All right, guys. You know Fridays are our Sundays. Uh, Bible study is Wednesday night at eight thirty. All righty, be there with us. It's virtually on every platform. All right, be there with us. If you if you need any information, also remember you can reach out to www.bethmata.org and get information from us as well. All righty, God bless you all, and we see you. We hope to see you soon.